Hello, Money Queens and listeners. Welcome to Women Behind the Millions. Let's meet the women behind the millionaires, the women supporting, guiding, celebrating women with their wealth. You will hear from women millionaires, how they got there, what they wish they had known, what got them to be a millionaire, the emotional side, the spiritual side, the practical side of wealth. You'll also get to meet the women behind the scenes helping make it happen. Let's dive into Women Behind the Millions. I am Jessica Weaver, your host, best-selling author of three books, wealth advisor, and founder of The Women's Wealth Boutique. Let's start meeting the women. Hello, money queens. Hello, listeners. Welcome to Women Behind the Millions. Today, we are going to go into the healing journey. We're going to be talking about betting and risking on yourself, because if you can't do it on yourself, who's going to risk it on you? I am Jessica Weaver, your host. And today, if you don't know her already, (laughs) she is my work wife, my ride or die, my bestie. We talk nonstop all day long. She's been in my world for several years now, but we have Alyssa Goldman with us today. Alyssa is our creative director at Women's Wealth Boutique and JessicaWeaver.com. She's also the owner of Alyssa and Company, a strategy and implementation agency. Ooh, I like the name of that agency of women that takes you as a business owner from doing all the things to being the next big thing. How about that, ladies? She's a lifelong entrepreneur, minus a few years at the gas station. We're going to get into that girl at the gas station. She lives in upstate New York with her daughter, her chickens. Oh, we have so many stories that we could go into today. <laughs> get out. We are so excited to have Alyssa finally with us on Women Behind the Millions because she really, truly is probably the biggest advocate for women doing it. If, every day long, she says to me, you go bigger, you go home. That's what we are about here at the Women's Wealth Boutique at JW. So thank you, Alyssa, for being with us. Yay, I'm so excited to be talking with you today. Oh, there's so many. We've been working together for several years now, and every woman needs to have somebody like Alyssa <laughs> with them building it. She's the reason we can do all that we do. I know my friend's like, how are you doing it? I'm like, because we have Alyssa and her amazing team. It's not just her. She has an entire team behind her that is supporting us, our advisors, even this podcast, getting it to you ladies. So I love having her come out from kind of behind the scenes and putting her on the forefront because she has so much to give this world. So, so, so much. Thank you. (laughs) She's being modest here. You could tell. (laughs) So, Liza, what does it feel like to go from the girl at the gas station, and we are going to get into your story, but to go from the girl at the gas station to being the lead creative director at our very (laughs) fast-growing firm? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. You know, I, I look back now and, you know, I, I've said it a million times, like to friends and on social media, but like that girl could not imagine where I am today. Like it was not a possibility. It was not even in the realm of like what I what I thought I would be doing. Um, So, yeah, it, it's incredible. I love it. What is one thing that you could go back and tell yourself? at that time in your life that you just have to keep going like you just got to take the chance and keep going and and keep believing in yourself even when you feel like nobody else is it's it's you that has to like pull yourself up um and do it so yeah keep going i'm sure everybody who's listening right now they've had their own gas station version in their own stories or maybe they're at their gas station it's a bad relationship a dead-end job miserable and happy frustrated and how many times you're like was it me right am i the problem right (laughs) did you ever feel that way oh for sure just what work is is what adulting is going to be and that's what i really want yes well and i think too you know a lot before i kind of went on my healing journey i just kept thinking like i'm doing everything and nothing is working like why isn't it my turn like I, I just kept telling myself, like, why isn't it my turn? I don't understand. Like, I'm always the nice one, right? Like, I always put others before me. Um, and you know, why? Why can't it be my turn? It just was like everyone else is doing it and succeeding, and like, you know, why isn't it my turn? So, you know, I just had to turn turn things around for myself. 
Um, I put myself first to to get there. So, yeah, it's true. You do get into the spot of waiting and waiting and trying to see. And sometimes God is protecting you. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. A bad, let's see, right? Prince Charming. Oh, he's going to come and save me. And Prince Charming's a dick. Yeah. It's like, oh, thank goodness yeah. I didn't go along that boat and get yeah. affected even more. But yeah. let's dive in. I'll, tell us about your, a little bit about your story. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, growing up was like pretty relatively smooth. <laughs> um, you know, when I got into, you know, the teenage years, um, you know, I went through like a lot of bullying in school and it was related to some um, abuse I had been through. So that was like incredibly difficult. And I just never felt like I had kind of a place in this like world generally. Like I just kind of was like, didn't I feel like you fit in with yeah, friends or the crowd? For sure. And, you know, it just was like, this is the track you're supposed to follow. And I was never quite on it. <laughs> Not in a bad way. Just like, I just was like, I don't, like, I don't, I don't know if that's me, but like, you know, you would just do things, right? You're like, well, I'm supposed to do that. Okay, let's, let's do it. And it just never, I never felt aligned, right? Um, and so I always felt like the weirdo, right? Like I'm, I'm the odd one out. Um, but so I started, uh, going to college on almost a full scholarship and decided like, I didn't like it. Right. Um, and I, I left college and started working at a gas station, um, because like, well, I I gotta do something right. Like, and growing up a lot of kind of the mindset in my family that was kind of always pushed was like, you go to college, you make something of yourself. If you don't go, like, it's going to be hard. You're going to struggle the rest of your life. Like, oh, no. So that's a new story. Your theme, oh, I have to struggle now. Right. Exactly. And like, no matter what I do, like, I'm not going to be smart enough now, like, to to do anything else other than, you know, just be doing like these kind of, I don't, I never want to say menial because like, I feel like if you feel like you're supposed to be at the gas station, then by all means go work at the gas station. But like, you know, I had, I always knew I had like ambition. Mm -hmm. Just my mindset was like, you're not going to be anything because you didn't go to school and you don't know what you want to do with your life. And like, so it was always kind of a, a big struggle. Um, and, you know, and part of it too is that like, I'm a creative. Right. And you always have that kind of like starving artist idea in your head. Like, oh, it's, you know, how are you going to get paid for your your art and your, you know, kind of um, it, 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 I kind of do woo woo stuff, too. Like, you know, it's like, what what is that going to pay? <laughs> yeah, that romantic story of that that artist and yeah. couch hopping. And it's not about the money. Right. It is about the money. Is that what it is? But to live. <laughs> So, um, you know, so I was working at this gas station and, you know, a couple of kind of like, you know, money things kind of came up, which I always find, you know, very interesting. One um, was that when I had dropped out of college, I was, you know, I was working, to, you know, just kind of um, small hours to during college to make, you know, extra money. And a guy that I was working with at the gas station had said to me, like, you're never going to leave this gas station. And I was like, mm -hmm. Great. Um, right, that yeah. encouragement. Right. And <laughs> can't wait to see like, what tomorrow brings. We went on down. Why not? Right. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that was incredibly hard. Right. It's like another, you know, a, a male figure in my life also, yeah. um, you know, being like, nope, it's not going to work out for you. So, um, you know, I I got married really young. Like that was the next like you're supposed to do this. If you're not going to go to college, then you know, start a family, you know, go down that path. Um, and so that's what I thought I had to do. And, you know, I worked really hard. Like, I, you know, I was working 40 plus hours a week at the gas station. And at one point was told, you know, we're giving you a raise. And I was like, okay, great. You know, it was like, you know, and I was laughing at another podcast I just recorded about this because it was like either a dime or, or a quarter an hour raise, right? I was making like $10 an hour. And I was like, a quarter, yeah, like it's like ten dollars a week, like you know, really add up at the end of the day. <laughs> like what? And 
you know, so I was told I was getting the raise, was really excited. And a few months later, um, we had like a management change in between. And a few months later, I was told that because the manager changed out, they weren't giving me the raise. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so like another, you know, you're just like, I, I, you know, I'm working really hard here. I don't understand. Like, you know, so, you know, I, I, after, uh, I think I stayed there like another six months or so, nine months and then went and nannied, um, you know, for, for some families, but, um, you know, again, like with the nannying was able to just like build my business in the background, like it was flexible enough where, you know, if there's a nap time, I could kind of keep working on things and learning things. Um, but we really, we had no money. Like this was not some like, I married rich story. Like <laughs> this one was like, I married okay. And we got by, but like, you know, by no means was this like, you know, a husband coming in to save me. Um, you know, and, and I knew like that it was made for something more and that I was going to have to make it happen. So that's what I started doing, um, you know, while while working as a babysitter and a nanny. So whatever you could do to get by and like you said, having that flexibility because yeah, building something else. Yeah. Did that help keep you going? For sure. For sure. Um, and I tried like a lot of different businesses. This was not just like oh, I just like exploded as like a creative director, right? <laughs> um, you know, we, I, at one point we had gotten um, a little bit of money um, from an inheritance. I think maybe it was like $10,000. This was not like, you know, a hundred thousand dollar, you know, big inheritance or anything. But, you know, I was like, well, you know, I was able to pay up a credit card and then use that credit card again, jacked it right up to open a retail store. And because it was what I really wanted. Like I was like, this is what I want to do. It was like a, a baby product store. I had worked with kids my whole life was like, yes. this is the ticket, right? Yeah. And um, shortly after, or it was right about the same time we signed the lease, I found out I was pregnant with my daughter and was super, super sick the entire pregnancy, working at the store, That's had her. It, uh, it was rough. And then, you know, had her. And, you know, when she was two weeks old, she was at the retail store with me because like we couldn't afford daycare. And right. And, you know, what are you going to do? Um, you know, so she was at the store with me. And when she hit like three or four months, the lease was up. And I was like, this is not it's not sustainable. Uh, you know, and I had to call it quits on that. And you know, it's hard to, you know, think you're giving up on your dream or giving up on yourself, but knowing you have to do it, right? Like you can't dig a bigger hole. Um, so I think as an entrepreneur too, you kind of got to know when to pivot things, right? Like if it's not working out, don't yes. be the dead horse. Like you just got to gotta change it up. Um, but yeah, I did the retail store. I had gotten my sleep coaching certification right around the same time. And so luckily was able to do that. Um, you know, I started it um, and was able to do that at home. And again, just like, babysat and nannied, um, you know, kind of off and on just to make ends meet while that was getting up and running. Um, and that, and did that. So, yeah. Yeah. She's a sleep coach. So anybody who's <laughs> has kids, we forget about this because she does so many other amazing things. Yes. But what I'm noticing is you kind of, like you're being very flexible and knowing to pivot, but also yeah. lining up what is next. Yeah. It's almost like you kind of knew, it's like you're walking in the door, nope, not that door, that's not for me. This door, nope, nope that door is not for me. But you kind of have your eyes on, okay, what is that next opportunity? Yeah. Or what can I do? Especially as your life is changing, getting married, having a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I think too, like, again, you just have to, like, if you're like, you have to understand, like, entrepreneurship is not, one, it's not for everybody, right? It's not like just a get rich quick thing, right? Um, I have a post coming out where we're recording this around Christmas time and my post for around Christmas time, you know, says like, oh, you know, overnight success in quotes. Right. Um, because like now, if you just joined my journey now, you're like, whoa, like this is amazing. <laughs> but if you didn't know the past, you know, 15, 20 years, <laughs> like, um, you know, it's, it's a whole different ballgame. But um, yeah, you just you got to know when to keep 
believing in yourself. Like I said, like when when you feel like no one else is, you just got to keep going and, you know, and change things up. Right. You can't just be like, this is the only path of success you have in your mind. Right. You have to kind of trust that things are moving around and and working for you. Um, And I think that has been kind of a big part of my journey is, you know, I, I really I truly live with like no regrets that like every single thing has lined up for the exact reason down to the fact that I bought my coffee this morning. Right. Or like, like every little thing. Right. Um, not to give people anxiety. Cause like, I get like that too, but <laughs> you know, like every decision, it really has led you to where you are. Like there are no wrong decisions. Right. Um, you had to take the best of it. Yeah. You make the best of it in the moment and, and just keep going. So, yeah. In your story, you talk a lot about the shoulds. I should be going to college. I should get married. This is when I should have kids. And we do get very blinded by what we should be doing. And what are the shoulds even coming from our parents? And it's coming from their parents, right? It's multi-generational or society or it's how your parents are influenced or your friends are influencing you. But for me, because I, over the last few years, been a part of your journey more and more as we become closer yeah. closer seeing how you've been scraping those shoulds away yeah and really i think that's what god does a lot of the times is yeah. we going through these paths and he's stripping away no you're chasing somebody else's version of success no you're living up to somebody else's expectations but what is it that you Alyssa, want to do in this world yeah i'm curious because you're a tech maven you have it in your signature <laughs> how did you get so good at technology. Yeah. And I have to say to the listeners here, the people that are best at technology, if they can interview and we have another good friend, Ashley, they didn't they didn't finish college, but they're amazing at technology. Like it, that's a huge myth that you have to go to college or you'll struggle. Yeah. But how did you get so good at it? Yeah. So I mean, I think it just goes back to like we didn't have any money. Like, <laughs> you know, everyone was just figuring it out. I had to figure everything out for myself, just like WordPress, everything, you know. And that's really how all of my knowledge really grew with business. And I and I will say, I do think, you know, we all have innate, like built in kind of skills. Right. And and I think part of that is also, you know, your human design, which I won't dive into today, but it's such a fascinating um, aspect of things. But, you know, I come from a very like artistic, but also mechanical family. Right. I have both that A and B side and I'm really like split. I truly am like both, speak sides both languages. Yes. Yeah. And so on one hand, it's incredibly a uh, great blessing. And on the other hand, it's chaos. But, it's, you know, it, it has worked really, really well. Um, but yeah, no, I, I just I had to learn everything because we didn't have the money. You know, people would be like, oh, just hire a website designer. It's like two thousand dollars. I'm like, from where? Look at, where would I do that? <laughs> where would that money go? Right. Like, I'm just scraping by. I'm just, you know, putting food on my table. And, you know, I was like, I got to get out of this hole. Like, how am I going to do that? So, you know, I, I had to learn everything. And and like I said, every piece of the story, it all added up to here. Right. So perfect. <laughs> it is. It makes so much sense why college didn't work for you, because you're a hands on learner. Yeah. Right. You learn through experience and really getting diving into a project, figuring out how to build a website instead of just sitting there learning it from a presentation. Yeah. So it makes complete sense why you took the other approach. I mean, I'm just going to dive in. I'm going to figure this. I'm going to be scrappy. I'm going to figure it out. Totally. Exactly. (laughs) And how you work so well with entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs usually, right, we're visionaries. Yeah. We're in projects, but we're not very practical. We don't have that engineering side detail oriented, like just get it mm-hmm. done. So you're able to talk the entrepreneur's language with the yeah. guy's side, but then you are an entrepreneur's best friends because they need that other side on how do I actually implement this idea and bring yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. And I think too, like I think I said it in my Women Behind the Millions, the magazine article where like you know, I kind of call myself like a dreams midwife, right? Where I am like able to get your ideas out and like help your true Burn self. Them. Yeah. Like help your true true self shine. Um, you know, really 
but still reining it in, right? So like that practical aspect to how to actually get those things done to get to your big goal eventually, right? Um, yeah. Yes. You've recently ri- written an article for our magazine that accompanies this podcast, Women Behind the Millions, mm-hmm. and it was about breaking up or blasting, tearing down the self-induced box. Now, yeah. self is your system that you yeah. created that helped all of our advisors, helped me, yeah. helped you. Talk to us about your, this system, self. Yeah. So self basically is like a huge, it's kind of like the culmination of my healing journey. So I've, you know, it's, it's been a six year process. It's still in process, <laughs> but it's healing is practice. forever. Yeah. Healing is forever. Um, but self really came out of it because I, I've been working with a lot of clients, right? And people generally hire me for the the tech aspect, right? Or like on a on a small project basis. And I just realized that like behind the scenes, like I was really implementing my my strategy behind it. And so I call it the self-made um biz magic. And basically what it is is self stands for um your success vision, your empowered views, your life goals, your financial mindset, and friction, right? And these are all the things that basically hold us back and prevent us. Like when you don't have yourself in your business, you're playing by all those shoulds and supposed tos, right? And it's like a mismatch of energy. And clients, potential clients, people read that immediately. And they're like, like it's not necessarily it's like their inner self their inner self is you know can tell like oh she's just kind of like chasing the money or like it's just not there's not an alignment there right it creates a distrust um and so when you are kind of your actual self that energy pulls through and is like i need to learn more about what she's doing or you know what is how is that going to help me um so yeah so self the method, um, you know, is is a way to kind of tease that out of you, um, you know, and, and make you shine in your business. So. What are some things that the people listening and watching this now can start implementing from self? You know, the friction is one that always stands in my mind. Yeah. What are the things that are not efficient in your business? Yes. Yeah. So what are some things that they can do right now, these ladies? Yeah. So I think, you know, understanding the difference between what you think you should be doing and what you actually want to do, right? It's big in the financial industry, let me tell you. Because yeah. yes. we drink the Kool-Aid. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what complies to tell me I have to do. And yeah. you look like you blend in. You look like, yeah. so this, that's oh. huge. Huge. Um, because once you understand like, what you actually want to do, it lets you plan things out. Right. I usually tell clients like when you're 80, what do you want to look back on and say you did? Because like the time is now. Right. <laughs> uh, so there's no guarantee. Um, you know, you you either need to be actively working towards those things or they're not going to happen. Like, um, you know, so that's a, a big differentiator is just knowing what you actually want. Um, and I think, too, it's so important just to understand the community of the people you're around right um and if they're actually supporting your goals and are excited for you or are they kind of like the negative nancys who are just like oh that's nice right or (laughs) that's nice passive aggressive remarks yes yeah that is a very good point because we've had to get rid of we've had to shed some relationships some employees and people that you don't realize how much that holds your business back until they're gone. And then you take, oh, whoa. Yes. Yeah. But I think a hole in the sinking ship in the ship and it's going to bring you down. Yeah. 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 It's huge. And, um, you know, another part too, I think, is like truly understanding your worth. Right. Um, and that goes, you know, as part of the financial mindset part. And, and you know, you do so much with that, um, you know, with all of us as, as a team as well. Um, but really just like, you know, understanding, like there was a lot of jobs I worked after the gas station for $10 an hour because I was like, I, I guess this is what I charge. <laughs> this is you know, part. no money that I can get. Right. And sometimes it's, you know, what can I get that's, I know I can get. Yeah. And how many times do we see when they raise their prices, they don't sell, so they lower them right away. 
Yeah. And they fall into that trap. Yeah. It's like there's this invisible wall, this barrier we can't quite yeah. seem to block. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think too, you know, I did some traveling this year. You and I went on a trip um, together and, you know, I, I was able to go out to L.A. as well one time and just to visit my brother and, you know, just seeing what's outside of your normal zone. Right. So yes. when you see that and when you're when you're enveloped in a different kind of world and environment like that, you're like, oh, right. Like people do have money to spend and they are excited to spend it when it's the right person. And like. So when you're creating things, you know, creating offers and and things in your business and you believe in it, like that's why you should be creating the offer is because you're like, this is amazing. This will change someone's life and be excited about it um, and then price accordingly. Right. Uh, but knowing like there is there's money out there. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's a big, a big thing into those different world levels of wealth has been a same with myself. It's like I grew up my father's firm. I knew a certain amount of wealth and what a successful business would look like in his eyes. Yeah. And that could just be your blueprint that you stick to. Or you could, are there other ways to grow and build? And I think, again, the trip that we went on for both of us was eye-opening and yeah. gave us uh, this umph really to get us through the end of the year. So I agree, yeah. getting out of your world, talking with other people outside your industry, in your industry, Yes. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. It's all about who you surround yourself with. And yes. Yeah. And I know, you know, when I, you know, kind of started on on my healing journey, creating that community was was hard, right? Because you know you're gonna shed like those like familiar layers to you. And you know, it's I I, I, I don't really want to say like I was lucky the pandemic came along, but um, you know, I think like that just was kind of a, a push for some of those like last final layers, right? Um, I'm not a confrontational person and I'm also not like a ghosting person, but you just, you have to be like true to yourself and, you know, know when something isn't the right fit, so. Yes, I was gonna ask you, and you just brought it up, have your relationships changed, especially on a personal side, even professional too, let's say yeah. for both, yeah. as you feel there? Yeah, I mean, I think I was lucky enough to be able to surround myself with amazingly supportive friends. Um, you know, those kind of ride or die people who are like, I got you, like, you know. I want to see you succeed instead of feeling yes. jealous or yeah, yeah resentful. Yeah, That's yeah. and I, you know, I think a lot of it too is like, you have to show up to that friendship authentically and be okay if they're not okay with it. Right. And it was people pleasing. Yes. Like, you know, if they're not okay with how you truly are, it's it might not work out as a friendship. Right. Um, and you know, and that's okay too. So um, yeah, it's like, you know, surrounding yourself with that community. And I don't think I mentioned it, but so I am uh, getting divorced now. We're separated and um, you know, financially was, you know, just stuck for a while in the marriage. And you know, knowing kind of ahead of time, you know, building, you know, what did I need that support community to look like if I was going to be a single mom? Um, you know, what does that need to to be? Like who who am I gonna be, you know, calling and crying with and you know, going through all these things with and you know, who has your back for real? Um, you know, that's what that's what you need to kind of look at um when you're do when you're on this. So Oh yes, yes. Another question to that. Have you seen your finances changed as you healed? Yes. Well, a million percent. <laughs> Do you like any yes. <laughs> you, I'm curious. Did you ever almost avoid trying to heal? Because we know when we're going to go through healing, we're going to have to feel yeah. some. We're going to have to feel yeah. some. We're going to have yes. to go through the emotions. Are there times that you almost resist it? Oh, yes. I mean... Um, uh, you know, kind of what kicked off um the whole healing journey was I was at like a super, super low place. I I just had a miscarriage um like nine months or so before uh when I kind of kicked off the healing journey. And, you know, I I went to a therapy session because I just didn't want to be here anymore. I was like, I just this this is my rock bottom. I don't want to be here anymore. And 
you know, at that point, I feel like my body had failed me. Like, what else could possibly fail in this, you know, where I'm at right now? And, you know, the therapist basically said to me, like, you know, I explained all of my story to her, every little detail, like, no holds barred, right? (laughs) And she was like, well, you're an addict. And I was like, what? (laughs) And she was like, you know, you're, you're numbing yourself with relationships and just living this like surface level life right and you're not being you yeah like and so that's really what kind of kicked off the whole you know kind of okay well I you know I I had I knew I had to fix things for my daughter that I didn't want I didn't want to live like this and she needed a mom um yeah and so you know knowing like you know with with the when you come from an abusive past, um, you often keep people at arm's length, right? Because, you know, in my brain, it was like anything you love is going to leave, right? And so for me, it was incredibly hard to to be a mom to her because I was like, if I love her too much, like something's going to happen to her. And so it was incredibly, incredibly hard. And you know, so that was kind of the precipice that kind of kicked off everything was like, I just was like, I have to change this. This can't go on. And, uh, you know, going from there, I I did I just did a lot of work. Right. And again, I didn't have any money then. <laughs> That's why we we're still no money. Um, and did a lot of reading, a lot of self-help. Um, I really, I'm not like a therapy person. It wasn't the right fit for me. I only did that one session. And I was going to ask, did you keep going? Yeah. Somewhere? <laughs> I did not. I did not. Like um, she like lit a fuse and then just. Yes. Like, <laughs> she ran away. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, I, I just, I just kind of knew, right. I was like, well, you know, what does addiction look like? Right. And so then I knew like, okay, if I'm living this surface level, what does it look like underneath or above? Right. And so I had to dig myself out. Um, and that's really what I spent the last bunch of years doing. And as I kind of peeled back the layers, um, you know, things started coming into my life. Right. Um, I met my amazing friend, Robin, who um, just completely changed everything for me. She really just sweeped in and was like, what do you mean you're making $10 an hour? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Because um, I really was doing the same work that I'm doing today then. Um, and she was like, what? And, you know, she just kind of changed everything for me um, and just gave me an opportunity and a hand up, right? And I always kind of say, like, it's never a hand up or it's never a hand out. It's a hand up, right? Like, if you are willing to do the work, the right people will find you and will help you. And you can also like ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, you know, and, and don't feel like you have to suffer with things. And but so Robin came into my life and just got me a couple of like smaller jobs. Um, but that were paying a, a lot more than what I was doing previously. And it and it just gave me enough confidence to be like, okay, like you know, I can pay my bills and I'll be okay. And, you know, I got to the point where um, I knew I would be okay, you know, leaving my husband. It was like just enough, right? Like that just enough money where like next year is going to be great. And then, so that was fall of 2019. And I think you and I had maybe just started working together then. And, um, you know, I was like, okay, I have just enough, like I'll make just enough to leave fall of 2019. And 2020, <laughs> you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like you, things keep going, right? Like the world evolves and you evolve and, but you have to put yourself out there to do that and, and to keep going. And I have to say like, it, despite it being a pandemic year, 2020 was one of my, my highest years then to date. Um, It was, it was a huge year for me. And um, yeah. And, and being an entrepreneur, I was able, you know, to stay home with my daughter when, when schools were closed and, um, be flexible and work and, and in kind of the new role, um, you know, as co-parents and, and things like that. So it's been an, an incredible journey, really. So what a story. What is there? What is the future? 
Yeah. So um, I think this year is book year. It's something I've kind of been like percolating on for a long time. I know you and I have talked kind of extensively about it. Um, I cannot wait for this book to come out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and Girl at the Gas Station. So Girl at the Gas Station, I have kind of started sprinkling it, you know, little hints in about it. But it's really kind of a part of um, our business where as a listen co, you know, we want to provide an offer for people who don't necessarily have the funds, but want to invest in themselves. And so a lot of the programs that you'll see coming out and, um, you know, workshops or some of our services as well, will have a, a girl at the gas station option, um, you know, whether it's lower cost or um, completely free. That's yeah. incredible. And, uh, yeah, we just want to give a little bit of a hand up. So I really love that. The girl at the gas station option. That's incredible. Well, everybody, everyone who's listening, watching, that you need to follow Alyssa and company and creative director. I mean, the future's so bright for you. Where can everyone find you? Yeah, it's so mostly we're mostly active on Instagram. So it's Alyssa and Co. And it's uh, my name is spelled all messed up. So it's uh, it's I L I S S A and then um, A N D C O. Um, but you'll find us on Instagram, Alyssa and Co. dot com, all that jazz. But I really I work I love working with entrepreneurs on strategy and uh, and then our team helps you implement all the pieces that we have in place. So that way you have this like cohesive um, you know, team and implementation behind you uh, to really make make those things happen. So yeah, she's amazing. I call her our asset builder. She's able to pull these, all of our knowledge, experience, expertise. She can then pull it into assets that you can use to build traction, get prospects, clients, get paid on them. It's incredible. She works individually with each of our advisors. She joined the Women's Wealth Boutique and. I mean, they're all raving fans of Alyssa. As am I, we wouldn't be able to do any of this without you. So grateful to be able to spend some time with you today on Women Behind the Millions because you really are the women supporting behind the scenes. But now you're you're getting out there. You're shining your light. You're going bigger, go home. Because you tell me that every day. I'm going to tell them that every day. <laughs> Get out. No, you got, I've got your back. But thank you, Alyssa, for being on here. And I'm sure everyone is resonating with the girl at the gas station, whatever that version is for themselves. Yeah. Or if they're there, reach out to Alyssa. She'll share it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for being such a huge supporter of yeah. us and our mission. And yeah. thank you to all who listen, watch this episode of Women Behind the Millions. We are here to straighten the crowns and not knock them off. We tell you to get them out of your closet, dust it off, put it back on. Even if you're at the gas station right now, put it back on. <laughs> and start showing up and I'm going to leave you with one thing I love what Alyssa says she tells herself on a daily basis that $100 is not a lot of money yeah I think for this year Alyssa it's going to be $1,000 is not a lot of money I think so I think so for sure and for everybody listening let's raise that bar $100 isn't a lot of money $1,000 isn't a lot of money to charge to earn I started saying to myself it's easy to make more money yes it's easy to make more money because a lot of us have a similar storyline of it's got to be hard work. It's got to be a struggle. You have to sacrifice yeah. or, or can it be easy? Yeah. Be easy. yeah. All right, Alyssa, thank you for being here with us. And you'll see more of Alyssa yeah. and company, especially as the girl, the gas station comes out. Yes. All right. Bye everyone. <laughs>